Tiny Whoop is essentially the Kleenex of FPV. Like it is probably the single most influential product in the entire FPV category. And that is truly saying a lot because it has now become a lot more mainstream than it used to be. But it is, it's, it's a very, very widespread product category and there's tons and tons of copies. But now we have the brushless options and up until maybe six months ago, the brushless options were pretty unreliable and crappy, but our electronics have advanced tremendously. And now we have the Emacs Tiny Hawk. <clears throat> and the reason why I explain all that is because I feel like this product has all the ingredients necessary to become a standard, like an actual standard, a standard product like the Tiny Wolf. However, not the Tiny Wolf, but it has, it has all the ingredients necessary to become this, uh, a very widespread standard. And I think that's what they're pushing for as well. I got this thing about a week ago and I have, th this is one of the only things that I've actually gotten where I actually came home and I wanted to fly it. Like I have flown a lot of things and I essentially only fly to test stuff anymore. Like I. I enjoy flying, but I don't have time to go fly at all. And I was surprised because I, I actually wanted to fly this thing when I came, came home. And I, I have like I've had like dozens of whoops, and I haven't really cared to fly any of them. So I have I have put this thing definitely through its paces. I have smashed this thing every possible way imaginable, and the only damage that I could visibly have seen was when a dog actually was chasing me and bit me out of the sky and dislodge the camera, which I just pop back in place because the whole thing is really flexible and like rubbery and I can just flex the top up and pop the camera back in place. I also, just before making this video, I did an inspection and I noticed that I did break one of these little spindly, spindly things holding the prop guard things on. That is the only damage and I'm, and I'm telling you, I have slammed the crap out of this thing. Like I have really like trampled it. Like my nephew loves chasing it. He has jumped on it and stepped on it. Back. Like everybody has destroyed this thing and it's still holding up, and I have the same original set of props. They didn't send me any spare props. So I'm really, truly, truly impressed with the durability of this thing, and that's the number one ingredient to me that it needs to have. It needs to have the utmost durability, and if I haven't been able to break it like this, I, ha I believe that there will be very few people that can break it too quickly. Of course people will be able to break it, but not that quickly. It will at least endure some length of time. Moving on, you might notice that the frame is a little bit unique. It's a kind of an upside down frame. And this is probably the best way to go, especially for a whoop, not to have anything obstructing the airflow coming off the props going to blowing down. But it might be considered a little not practical because the props can get stuck on stuff. In this case, that is absolutely the farthest thing from the truth possible. You have the battery underneath and you have these little side things that hope that the kind of point down and prevent the props from really touching anything. I've even taken off in, in dirt, grass, leaves. Like it doesn't, it's not, it's a non-issue. And additionally, because the props aren't exposed to the top, hair doesn't get trapped up into the props as, as easily. So that's a big benefit as well. Also, the props don't get hit. So you don't actually break props too easily. Like I said, this is the original set of props. Moving on, the next big ingredient that I personally think is a really big ingredient is that it has an F4 chip. On top of that, if you take a close look at the electronics, which are hard to see, and I'm not really I'm too lazy to take it apart right now for everybody, but if you look at the electronics, they actually, the circuit board, the circuit bordery or whatever it's called, they look really nice. They look better than typical Emacs. Yeah, definitely better than typical Emacs. And it is an F4 processor. It is a two board, I believe, yeah, a two board solution. So you're looking at the flight controller. It does actually have solder points as well. It's a two board solution, and then there's a VTX on the other side, and then there's a separate camera. And in addition to that, it also has connectors for the motors. So if you do need to replace a motor, you can just unplug the motor and plug in a new one back in. So it's a solderless solution. So that is another very, very big ingredient. Finally, flight time. This thing is using 0802.5 motors in 15,000 kV. Is it 15? Yeah, I think it's 15,000. 15, yeah, 15,000 kV. And if you compare that to other whoops, that's actually a pretty low kV. My, my quote unquote favorite whoop to fly aside from this one actually has 22,000 kV motors and it gets about 40 seconds less flight time than this. So I'm getting anywhere from two and a half minutes to five or six minutes just floating around on this thing on a 450 milliamp battery, like 1S battery. Another thing is that this is a product in the 1S category. They tell me that they have ideas for a potential 2S product, but I personally don't prefer the 2S whoops 
because they're really powerful. They don't fly like a whoop anymore. I just need enough power to pull out of dives and do what I want to do. And that's what this gives me. And it's also something that I can just charge with a travel charger on the go. I don't need a specific 2S charger or to deal with cumbersome batteries or cumbersome wires. And that is also very important for simplicity's sake for a beginner. Another ingredient, it runs Betaflight or pretty much anything that will probably come after Betaflight that is compatible with Betaflight boards. So that's a big ingredient. It's a big positive. And then lastly, it performs awesome. <laughs> it performs super awesome. Because it has an F4 processor, it's much faster. It can run 8K, 8K, and when you're coming out of dives, which it can do, it can pull out of dives, which is the big key factor here that it can pull out of dives. You can actually do acrobatic moves with this thing. It will not have crazy prop wash like a tiny whoop usually does. And there are, um, what is it called, the silverware whoops, the alien whoops. Those are also running F4 processors, and they have a similar level of performance in which they don't exhibit the same kind of crazy flutters and prop washness and they kind of feel like a, a video game to fly but that's a very sub subcategory of tiny whoops and it's just because they have their custom firmware and custom everything and this performs very similar to that which is also very nice to say it, it performs stellar it really does perform stellar one caveat i would say is that i do not agree with the tune that it comes with so if you look in the description below also i'm going to put it on the screen here this is my tune that i run on it it's just a vague tune that i plugged in from one of my other whoops and I feel like it's much better. Also, take pay close attention to my rates. Um, those are my personal rates, and I personally like a lower feed forward than standard. I think 60 is a little bit high, and that's what it's default on right now. I prefer 45 because it just softens everything, and I don't have the smoothest hands, so it just softens everything, and it just feels more nice to fly. Um, my rates may be a little bit high for you if you're a beginner, but I truly believe that my setup here that I have here performs significantly better than what it ships with and I've already informed them as the, of that as well but who knows whatever it is even default it flies pretty darn well so if you're a beginner the only thing you're going to have to struggle with is dealing with beta flight just to connect your controller and set up the arm switch but there are a couple of things that I'm not crazy about on this thing and one of those things are what these little spindly fibers that kind of hold the prop guard I at the moment I open the box I'm like oh man these are so thin they're going to break but they didn't break for a really long time, so I was really impressed by that. And if they did bulk them up, it would be more stiff, so it may actually crack sooner. It's really hard to say. You really have to just expect things to break if you put it through the punishment that I put it through. Next, once the camera got knocked loose once, it kind of got knocked loose a couple other times when other dogs were corralling me or something. So um, it's not really its fault, but yeah. Um, another thing you might notice is that it doesn't have any antennas, which is really super nice, but also the video signal is like 90% as good as like something like this that does have an antenna on it, but you can kind of take it apart and plug in an antenna. Sergio actually had problems in his shop flying around. I had problems. I think it's due to his Wi-Fi. Oh yeah, and finally, so it comes with this little case which is a very nice case. It's very nice that it comes with. It's $99, so it's amazing. It even comes with anything. It also comes with this little charger, and it uses a standard 450 milliamp, um, 75 millimeter whoop battery, which is great. Um, it comes with this little charger, which is a USB charger. I haven't even used this one. It has one side for uh, 4.2 volt charging, one side for 4.35 volt charging, which is, is nice, but I mean, I guess they had to include this, but I would much rather they include something like this, which is much more convenient, but it's more of a hobby, hobby product. You do have to use a LiPo to charge with it. This is what I use to charge all these batteries. It's, it's, it's a fantastic combination these, with these two. And yeah, so uh, that's, that's, that's after a week of slamming this thing into everything. That, those are all of my complaints. Those are truly all of my complaints. I, I, I'm really genuinely impressed with this product because it does kind of meet some really really high standards that i have and also it's for a fantastic price 100 bucks it's really really hard to beat and also they're saying that before christmas they will have a box kit that will come with a controller and goggles for 160 dollars i don't know how they're pulling off these prices because this is not a bad quality product this is not a low quality product it's actually a good it's not a bad product it's actually good which is why it's impressive that it's at that price point. And if you've built one of these things, you know that it's not cheap. Like it's, it's not like a little $20 toy. It costs you a hundred bucks, hundred and something bucks to build one of these things. So especially the actual tiny whoops, they're not, they're not that cheap. Even the brushed versions are not that cheap. So yeah, so that's it. I can actually recommend this product to everyone, beginners, everybody alike. It's great.
Oh yeah, one more thing. I'm gonna be giving away these two um, to one of the 50 comments below. Like the first 50 comments, I will randomly choose two people to send these to. Please refrain from commenting randomly after the comments have reached more than 50 because it will drown out the discussion that might be going on below and I'd rather not do that. So yeah, that's it. I have now gotten 20 mosquito bites. I hope they floss after eating me.